there is Bluff Knoll and we are going to climb that one this morning. Oh wow, it's so pretty. So the phone's light up because we're getting signal up here. Oh, I just sent you a Snapchat. Did you? And I would think we'd be climbing, you know, some mountain covered with snow the way we're all wrapped up. <laughs> I've got the got the full headscarf on and look at the view. <coughs> anyway, is it broken? Oh. Oh. Alright, well, it's not coming with us. Hold your equipment, that's the mountain. It, the first few steps, which are downhill. <laughs> All right. If we can get a run up to get up the <laughs> big one. So we're at Bluff Knoll. It's a classification for distance 3.1 kilometers to the summit, and we're at an altitude of 1,095. Okay. <laughs> oh. Five minutes in, I won't lie, I'm puffing. Yeah. Oh, it's easy going at the moment. Full step, so one foot in front of the other. How's that going for you, Shaz? <laughs> How far into it are we? We're 1.4 into it. So it's well, nearly halfway. 1.7 to go. Averaging a heart rate of about 160. <laughs> well, the stairs are pretty much easy enough to, each step's easy enough, but they're just re re relentless. There's just one after, one after the other. It's a grind. Okay. But there it is. There's our target. So, well, that's oh, to the side of it. Get I think so. But it's the hills over here. Yeah, well, there's the knoll. The knoll's over the back, so right. that's just a little bubby. All right, here come some hikers. Let's keep moving. Okay, so... Righto. Halfway. Very cloudy. We just chatted to some hikers that went up for the sunrise and they were very disappointed it was clouded in, so... Hopefully it'll clear by the time we get there. But this is the halfway mark, the easy bit. He's behind us by the looks of it. It's all up. Up, up, up. So Shaz has voted that as the summit. But how many times have we done that and had false summits? <laughs> Not on this mountain yet, but that could be the first. Yeah, we're on the other side of the mountain. 
right now and it's quite a strong cold breeze blowing which is sort of refreshing and cold at the same time so it's because they're so sweated on the side nearly there all right we're at the pony end near the summit i think check it out Cold. We were sweating. Cool breeze hit us, and it was suddenly very chill. There's clouds, and it's starting to rain. Good plan. We made it. <laughs> so my calculations are. That's the car park all the way down there. It's looking down off the knoll, quite a drop. Looks like we might get clouded in. I don't know if the camera captures this, but it's quite spectacular. Bluff Knoll is coming down. This is the return. You can see off in the Sterling Ranges in the distance through the haze. Be nice on a really clear day but still spectacular nonetheless. Took us about about 75 minutes to get to the top and I guess it'll be about the same coming down. Yeah. Great walk. How's it going? Okay, it's shut. It's a bugger. Albany had a 178 year whaling history and they saved the old whaling station as a museum to that. So you can come in and see all facets of the industry back in the day and one of them being one of the original whale chasing boats which they've put high and dry next to the factory. Uh, it's a steam driven boat, it's worth a wander around, it's got the harpoon on the front and uh, then you can wander down into the uh, station itself and see the areas where they were flailing the whales. and. Um, melting them down into oil. So everything was sort of steam powered back in the day, which sort of, uh, some of us likes a bit of different engineering sort of stuff, it's worth a look at. So these whale skeletons, they, <laughs> believe it or not, they get the whale and they bury it in the beach sand, um, I think for a couple of years. And then they come back and they dig it up and label all the bone parts one by one and bring them back in and, yeah, put them back together in the museum here. So pretty spectacular to see that. So we're just, we're just inland from Denmark, taking the back road up to the highway. guarantee you won't miss this spot when you come down to the southwest it's everyone knows about it, everyone talks about it and when you get here you'll see why 
So uh, plan to spend the whole day here if you can, if the weather's good, because there's there's a couple of different beaches to swim at and the rocks are great to sit on in the sun. So um, yeah, look forward to this place. Heading further west along the coast, we stopped in at Lowlands Beach, and yeah, the fishermen were out in force, and this was the reason why there was a massive school of salmon. This was one of many. We saw another bigger school further out that was coming in, that eventually came in just before we left. But uh, put the drone up, got a look at these guys. They were swirling around just off the beach. The waves were breaking over them. It was quite, uh, quite amazing. But they did come in a bit closer. Then they sort of swirled out again, and there was a big shark stalking them as well. I was hoping to catch him in the drone, but. Uh, anyway, you'll see these all along the coast, schools of salmon, and, and this was not the last school we saw. So not to be missed, across the bay from Elephant Rocks, more to the west again, is Parry Beach and this place is pretty bloody good. I have to say there's a great campsite there which is, uh, I think it's all unpowered but it's amongst the trees. Uh, if you're a tall vehicle like us you won't fit in there, I think they've got a height limit on it but if there's an overflow up the road you can camp in there if you've got an oversized vehicle. But uh, we spent a couple of nights, the second night we went down this beach uh, to that inlet and there was uh, plenty of room to camp there. We just pulled up there, uh, went fishing, stayed the night. Uh, it was a spectacular spot to wake up in the morning and have a view across the bay. And um, it was all uh, sheltered from the wind in there. So definitely stop in at Parry Beach, spend a few days. We got a feed of fish off the rocks as well, which was pretty bloody good.
does this. I've got um, some fishing caught this morning. Just floured them up for the flour. Fry pan, just got the oil getting hot there now. A bit of a windbreak because we've got some cold breeze coming in from the south east. We're right on the high tide mark here and we're cooking some fish up. Doesn't get much better than this. Oh, good. Right in. A bit of salad. Oh, yeah. A bit of salad. Some whiting. Water cup. Some herring do going there yet. It's like a bit of cold front coming through though. You can feel it. There's a bit of change in the air. See what happens. Yesterday morning, just there on that corner, there's a lot of weed there now. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of weed. I've well, got some fish, we've got a feed. Can you share Um, big stew. Big stew, mm. alright. <laughs> Probably need that, I can't cook it slow enough. Yeah, I suppose it might have to go. Look at this campsite though, this is a... This is a national park campsite, so the park guys have done a pretty good job here looking after this place. But uh, we're amongst the trees here. Oh, 
hope the track was going to be a bit overgrown, but it looks so far so good. Get in here? I think so. Fancy all right. these conditions I would safely say this is probably the most dangerous swimming beach I've ever seen most dangerous beach I've ever seen it's dangerous, it's, yeah. there's rips there's waves there's rocks there's sharks it's unbelievable Alright, Carl's got a salmon on and I freaking have my lines over here so it's just total chaos. It's jumped but it's pulling like a freight train. And trying to get it in amongst all these rocks with these waves. There it is. There it is. What do you got there, Carl? Oui. Oui. I think that's what they call a salmon. Wow. The size of it. Wow. Well, that's lunch. That's lunch and dinner. <laughs> we don't need to catch any more fish today. That's enough no. to feed us for a week. Oui. How's this spot? I oh, know. There's a big school of them just out there. I had one on on my little whiting rig trying to, I was trying to catch the bait that they were eating. Yeah. And um, broke me off. 
felt like I had a metre barra on there for a minute. But how's this spot? So that was a bronze whale. And I'm guessing it probably would have been three, three and a half meters long. It's a big one. It's massive, yeah. So what I've done, I cleaned that fish and I've thrown the carcass into the surf just here. I mean, it's not a swimming beach, so I just threw it straight in. And he's come straight in from the deep channel just out the back here and um, trying to find that carcass. So he's kept circling around. He's still out there. He's, he's still there right now. He's still looking for it. Um, yeah, don't swim. All right, back from the successful fishing trip. It's a great view from the campsite. So we, we realised when we pulled the bait out this morning that it was defrosting in the freezer on the on the Waco, and um, I think what has happened, it's running. The fridge seems to be running. Everything in the bottom of the fridge is okay, but the temperature's been so cool that the fridge hasn't been running long enough to actually keep the freezer cold. So everything in the fridge is fine. The thermostat only controls the fridge, so uh, yeah. in the cold weather, uh, it doesn't really experience that. So, Southwest of WA now, we've got these massive forest trees, carry trees. So we're just taking a, a national park road. We're still in the, the Castro National, the Castro National Park. I'm gonna get that right. And it's, uh, I think we're fortunate this track's just been graded. As we came on it from the Southwest Highway, it said that it was a very rough road, but we, as soon as we got on here, we could see the grade. It was probably the first car, actually, in some places. So that's good to know. But uh, we're turning off shortly. We're making our way to a town called Norcliffe and then to Windy Harbour. Or well, maybe Windy Harbour first, then to Norcliffe this evening. But, uh, yeah, I didn't know what to expect getting into these national parks, but this is just incredible. It's a beautiful forest. than ever. <laughs> there we go, okay. he's found a spot. Up here mate. Where are you going? Oh, he's coming. <laughs> Where are you mate? <laughs> 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 oh that's hilarious. Oh, that's why they're running there because they can't see a spot. 